I want to say just a word about the church's dishonesty in the way we've treated gay and lesbian people throughout the ages. We've always been willing to receive their gifts so long as they were dishonest about who they were. There is no virtue in dishonesty, and yet that's been the practice of the Christian church. The other thing that's important to recognize is that the definition which justifies the oppression of gay and lesbian people is a definition that's no longer operative. We used to think that homosexual people choose their sexual orientation because they are either evil or morally corrupt or perhaps mentally ill. I don't know of a scientist or a doctor in the world that still believes that kind of definition. Our sexual orientation is a given in life. It's like being left-handed or red-headed or, or blue-eyed or fair-skinned. It's a given. And the idea that the church would persecute people on the basis of something that's given is almost, it's, well, it certainly violates everything we know about the Christian faith. The words of Jesus in St. John's Gospel, that Jesus' purpose is to give people life and to give it abundantly, seems to me to be served only when we accept people as we are and celebrate the diversity that the human family has and free every person to express his or her gifts in an appropriate way. I hope that the Methodist Church will not go back into uh, a pre-20th century mentality of persecuting gay and lesbian people because they're open and honest.